Lecture 16 How School Education Harms Leadership, Part 2. 3. Providing Answers Instead of Asking Questions. Earlier, I mentioned that the first harm caused by school education to leadership is the encouragement of individual success. This leads many people in leadership positions to not realize that being a teacher and promoting the success of their subordinates and team is their greatest success. However, even if you realize that you need to be a teacher and develop people, school education continues to harm you. This is because you will teach like a school teacher. One of the main ways that school teachers teach is by cultivating the habit of giving answers instead of asking questions. This is the second harm caused by school education to leadership, as it does not encourage questioning. Asking questions is crucial to leadership, and I consider it to be the most important ability of a leader. However, have you noticed that school education does not cultivate your ability to ask questions? What does school education cultivate in you? It cultivates the ability to give answers, and not just any answer, but the standard answer, the answer that the teacher has in mind. Many people say that school education does not encourage innovation. Why not? The root cause is the lack of encouragement to ask questions, and the emphasis on giving answers, especially the so-called standard answers. The inability to ask questions leads to a lack of innovation and leadership. When these students become leaders, they either do not ask questions and give their own answers, or they ask questions like their former school teachers, which are often leading questions. Why are they leading questions? Because they already have a standard answer in mind and are waiting for their subordinates to answer it. Let me give you a few examples of leading questions that you often hear in conversations between superiors and subordinates. For example, do you still want to work for the company? The superior is waiting for the subordinate to say, yes, so that they can then lecture the subordinate. Another example is, when can you complete this task? The superior is waiting for the subordinate to give a specific date, and if it is later than the superior's standard answer, they will ask why and if it can be done earlier. As a leader and teacher, you need to overcome the negative impact of school education on questioning and learn to ask questions that do not have standard answers. Do you remember the important question that I mentioned leaders need to ask? That is our third leadership motto, what do you think? 4. Make up for people's shortcomings instead of employing people's strengths. I just talked about the two harms caused by school education to leadership. First, it only encourages individual success, and second, it does not encourage questioning. Now I will discuss the third harm. Let me ask you a question. Perhaps your child is in elementary or middle school, and if they score 90 in English and 70 in math, which subject do you think their teacher will ask them to spend more time on? I think it's not surprising that the answer is math. As a parent, you may also ask them to spend more time on math. Now I will tell you that this approach is problematic, not only affecting their academic performance but also their future career and leadership. Can you think of how it affects them? What is the harm? Management guru Peter Drucker emphasized that achievement is the most motivating factor, so playing to one's strengths is the most motivating. Therefore, it is harmful to focus on fixing weaknesses rather than utilizing strengths, as it can harm students' motivation to learn. However, the biggest harm is not in school but when these students enter the workforce. They have not learned how to utilize their own strengths or those of their subordinates. The third harm caused by school education to leadership is the lack of encouragement to utilize strengths. Developing each student's strengths is not the task of school teachers. Their task is to ensure that each student meets the minimum requirements. School teachers have their reasons for doing this, but in the workplace, it is essential to utilize strengths. Why? Drucker's motivating factor is only one reason. The more important reason is that only by utilizing strengths can results be achieved and competition between individuals and companies be won. For example, a sales manager may manage sales very well, scoring 90, 
but may only score 70 in financial management. Should they spend more time on sales or finance? My answer is sales. Improving finance from 70 to 80 is useful, but improving sales from 90 to 100 is more useful for the organization. If you give them an assistant who is good at finance, finance can improve from 70 to 80, or even 90. However, improving sales from 90 to 100 is not something that can be solved by simply hiring an assistant. You may think that improving sales from 90 to 100 is impossible because 90 is already a high score. The concept of a perfect score is also a harm caused by school education. School exams have a perfect score, but work does not. Scoring 90 in sales does not mean that you only have 10 points left to reach a perfect score. There is still a lot of room for improvement. School education, especially primary and secondary education, requires students to be well-rounded. However, in the workplace, only individuals and companies with specialized skills and strengths can have better development. Therefore, leaders as teachers are different from school teachers. School teachers want students to develop in all areas, while leaders want to utilize strengths. However, our school teachers have taught us for more than 10 years, and the concept they taught us is to fix weaknesses rather than utilize strengths.